I'm Sarah Canny, and this is my live Instagram show, Showing Up, Courageous Conversations with Women Who Are Following Their Heart. Hello, happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Welcome to my live Instagram show, which is called Showing Up where I um, chat with women who are following their heart and really diving into um, what lights them up and excites them in life. And the conversations that we have here on this show are really about the process of finding your purpose and passion and then also what it takes to make the dreams that you have that are sort of around that um, into a reality and um, how you overcome obstacles and um, how you deal with setbacks or, or failures or doubt or an, that voice of the inner critic. So really this show is about the process of making your dreams come true. It's kind of like the gist of it. So um, my name is Sarah Canny and I... Um, I'm the author of a blog that was called runfargirl.com, um, but my new website is sarahcanny.com, and all the blog um, content from the last nine years is still there, so if there are posts that you remember and love, you can find them on sarahcanny.com now. Um, I am really excited today to bring on Kelly Newlon, who is the owner of Rad Boulder. So Rad stands for Real Athlete Diets, Um, and Kelly is based out of Boulder, and I first met Kelly um, at the Run Mindful Retreat, which is a Timothy and Krista Olson's running retreat, Um, and at the beginning of the retreat, we kind of sat in this circle, and everyone went around and introduced themselves and said where they were from and what they did, and got to Kelly and her husband Morgan, and they introduced themselves, and Kelly started just talking about what she does and and she was there to feed everyone who was at the retreat and so she and Morgan provided the food for us and she was just talking about how passionate she was about nourishing other people and there was something about her story that I just found so beautiful um I like to cook um but there's sometimes when cooking feels like such a chore and I'm not like very super passionate about nourishing or cooking for my family or other people. But she talked about cooking with such a passion that it just struck me. My medium is not uh, pastry. It's more like kale. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And my focus in the pastry world was also chocolate specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's much different now. And one one of the things I love so much about the food industry is you're not, um, you don't have to just focus on restaurants. You can, it spans so broadly um, as, as my job really kind of um, tells that story uh, because my, I feel like now I'm more, I'm still in food, but I'm not in, I don't consider myself in the restaurant industry. I'm much more in the outdoor industry. Yeah. Um, but, and kind of food is, is more my gear than, um, wonderful contacts in the food industry or in the restaurant industry per se. Um, but my life has shifted in a different way. Yeah. So after years, come from, and then how did you act? How did you act on it when that yeah kind of came to you? Yeah, that's such a, um, a question that I get often. And I, I get often from people who are like, wow, I would really love to do that as well. Um, I was at the time I was, uh, 
I had taken a few years off of actually cooking in a restaurant and I was teaching at a culinary school in Boulder and it, it was just 40 hours a week. And when you're, <laughs> when you're in the restaurant industry, you're often working like 70 to 80. Mm -hmm. So I was working 40 hours a week and I thought, gosh, I have all this time on my hands. I should get another job. What should I do? <laughs> so, um, so I started working with this um, organization in Boulder um, that focused on um, youth and recovery. So I was, working about 20 hours a week with them and working with kids who are um, kind of on the the second end of like they have gone through detox from addiction and I was working with their um, therapeutic team and their parents and helping them as they move through food because once you go through an addiction the way your body responds to eating as you and I both know um, it's a whole different ball game mm -hmm. so I was teaching and then I was working 20 hours a week with this organization which I loved so much uh, because it was just so close to my own story and heart uh, but I was also um, feeling really burnt starting to get really burnt out on uh, just doing too much. And at the same time, I had just a random, you know, group of friends, eight to 10 people who were athletes who would reach out to me uh, and say, hey, I'm training for this race or this goal. Can you just kind of feed me um, contract work wise on the side as I train for this goal? And I would say yes to that because I had all this time on my hands. Uh, <laughs> And then one, one day on the way home from work, uh, I got a phone call from a friend who was actually a therapist working in this program I was with. And he said, hey, uh, I'm training for an Ironman. Can you feed me during this training block? And I said, you know, a rare occasion, I said, no, I can't. I'm stretched too thin. I hung up the phone. I was about five, ten minutes away from our house. And I thought, well, out loud, I was having this conversation with myself. And I thought, why am I not doing that full time? That's, that's what I want to do. I want to feed athletes full time. Screw all this other stuff. Like, that's it. That's what I want to do. I'm going to feed athletes in Boulder. And then in my head, in like 30 seconds here, I'm feverishly, I'm like, who's doing this? Someone else has to be doing this. This is a genius idea. Uh, of course, we always think our ideas Boulder, are doing this. Yeah, Boulder is a mecca for trail you know trail athletes road athletes like uh, runners triathletes I mean it's just a mecca for elite athletes so totally it's yeah. that somebody wasn't doing it before yeah yeah so that's what I was thinking um also I want to give a shout out to my little friend Sarah Smith who was a former student of mine who was also <laughs> one of my buddies um, <laughs> who just joined us I love it yes. <laughs> um so by the time I got home, like five, 10 minutes later, um, in my head, I was like, no one else is doing this. Why, why aren't they doing this? Because uh, no one else is crazy enough to do it because it's really fucking hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, that I wanted Morgan to, uh, to be my business partner, my husband, um, because he's way more dialed and less um, crazy than I am. So, <laughs> so I got home, you know, just a few minutes later and I bust in the door and I said, Morgan, I have this amazing idea. Uh, this is what I want to do. So it was all in like a 10, 15 minute span that I uh, had decided, you know, that I was going to change the world in my head anyway. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's what I, that's how I came up with it. Um, and, but Morgan already had a job. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that I also knew at the time was um, about to possibly be phasing out. Um, so it was kind of a good, he had an opportunity to either take a different position in the company he was with or maybe be interested in this. Um, so I needed uh, to really like hook him with it. Um, and that's when I came up with the name Rad. He was always saying, oh, that's so rad. It's so cool. Uh, so in like 30 seconds when I was washing dishes, like an hour later, I came up with the word, like, what, what can I turn rad into? And then I just made up real athlete diets, like out of nowhere. And that was it. Yeah, that's great, though. Yeah, that's, that's, our story. <laughs> that's what you do. So, so kind of if you could kind of explain, like, I mean, that's how you arrived at Rad Boulder, but like, can you explain what Rad Boulder is and what you do for some of my people who are watching who might not, not not know of you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in a nutshell, we are 
a catering company for endurance athletes. Um, on a daily basis, our business is um, athletes will reach out to us. Their, their sponsors are basically at this point, that's who hires us to, um, to work on projects. So let's say um, today I've been communicating with Pearl Zumi and Solomon for um, an athlete summit and um, an event for each of those two brands um, for events that are coming up. So they'll say, hey, we're having an athlete summit. Um, we have this many people coming. Can you cater that event for us? It's this many days long, um, this amount of athletes. These are their dietary restrictions. Um, can you come to this remote location or can you stay at this VRBO with us? Um, and what happens is, you know, there's a lot of catering companies out there, a lot of people that would that could do this. But what happens is this, most catering companies don't identify with endurance athletes, and they don't want to ever touch this list. Um, we have 50 people, half of them are gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free. The other half are gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free, vegan. Five of them have anaphylactic allergies to A, B, and C. <laughs> and there's all these different things. Um, and also, we need you to hike in three miles to this trailhead, and everything needs to be compostable, and blah, 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 blah. Then they're like, we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. So that's where we come into play. Yeah. Yeah, you found your, you've really found your niche, is, is kind of what, what has happened, is like, you saw this need, and you were just like, well, I can do that, and that excites me and interests me, and just kind of went right for it. Um, so what was it like sort of transitioning from something that was kind of steady, guaranteed 40 hour a week work to something where it's like you, you really have to kind of hustle and build your own business and, you know, do, do that for yourself? Um, that is a really a question I'm sure that you know the answer to. It's three <laughs> times the amount of work um, with no money. Mm -hmm. And you really can't, you can't leave, like, I still taught uh, and did my contract work that first year. And honestly, guys, I ended up in the hospital a year later, really sick. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it was really, really hard. It's one of those, what's that quote? If you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Mm -hmm. um, most people think they want something. And then after, like, three months of something being hard they're like that's too hard I didn't really we can't I can't possibly do this um and my kind of thought on that is you probably didn't want it as much as you thought you did um or maybe it just stretched you too thin um we don't have kids so there's less risk for us um but it's yeah it's it's hard it puts a lot of stress on on you, your spouse, your life, your everything. So um, it was really, really, really hard. Um, I've been a part of startups before, so I knew how hard it was going to be. Um, and I've grown up in the restaurant industry. Um, I'm also first generation American. I grew up in a Ukrainian household, so I know <laughs> what physical hard labor is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, and it wasn't until the second year that we were like, okay, like you can feel momentum, but that first year is, it's really hard. Really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So hard. Yeah. Like, no. And then you're like, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's a sucky. <laughs> so how many years in are you now since when you started? Um, gosh, I think we're almost five or we five. <laughs> we're, what year is this? Four or four and a half. Four yeah. And a half. Yeah, it's so crazy. Um, and I'll tell you, we're half booked for 2020. I just, wow. I know. It's so crazy. Um, yeah, the second year was like, oh, it feels like I feel like we're doing good. Um, and then there was like another year of really great. And then it was like, oh, okay, 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 now we're good. Now we're good again. <laughs> Um, after a year mark, Morgan, <clears throat> so Morgan left his job and helped me start up Rad for a year. Mm -hmm. And then he actually, um, 
was asked to go back to uh, the parent company that he worked for before. So he's now back with them. He's the director of sales for Ultimate Direction, um, which gives us insurance, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the hardest piece is like, how do you navigate that? And both my husband and I are self-employed and we actually like have a major insurance hiccup that we are dealing with now that's like, it's really stressful. <laughs> uh, and you have kids. You have three kids. I know. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. to the dentist on Friday. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Out of pocket. I don't know. Yeah. That's scary. It's really scary. So um, I feel like now we're in a good place with Rad that, um, that we haven't been in before. And that's been uh, really great. So, yeah, that's great. So, when you, you know, you're talking about just kind of the ups and downs and the, the peaks and valleys of owning your own business, um, you know, and I think like a lot of times when, like you said, when things get hard, people walk away or when there's a struggle, obstacle, we t sort of take that as a sign of like, oh, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Like maybe this wasn't where I was supposed to be. So I think there, there's like two ways to go about it. You either quit or you like push through it. But how do you, like, what keeps you going when things, when you're riding those, like, ups and downs? Like, what motivates you to keep moving forward? Uh, you know, I think that's such a good question. And I've just kind of learned this in life with everything. Um, when I look back at things that I panicked on before, I'm like, if I had just waited, <laughs> whether it was an hour or a day or mm -hmm. two days or two weeks, um, it would have settled. Mm -hmm. If I had just not, if I had just waited, let it fall into place and not forced it. And that felt like I needed to push it forward and controlled it. <clears throat> it would have worked out. I just needed to be patient. And I think of that a lot. So much of it is like running. <laughs> Everything to me is a running metaphor, you know. I yeah. Um, but it's really like that 50 mile, uh, and my coach reminds me of this all the time. You have to show up mm -hmm. and which I do all the time with rat. I don't always do in my running. I really fail at that right now. Um, <laughs> but if you're showing up, it will, it will work itself out. You just have to be patient. It's like in that mile 50 when you're like, oh my God, I feel like my insides are falling out right now. I'm like, if I can just get to mile 55, it might take me two hours to get to mile 55, <laughs> but my insides are going to fall out. <laughs> it might feel like it between now and then, but I just need to, I just need to ride it out and trust that what I have believed in is going to work. And then you know what? It always has. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I too could keep coming back to is like, you just have to trust that little, your heart, I guess, like that little seed that's in your heart that's that put the, the idea there, like it didn't come from nowhere, like it comes from, like within us. And if we trust it, and follow it and pursue it, and we're consistent, we show up and we persevere, then you're right, everything does work itself out. And it, yeah. you know, we keep progressing on the path that we're supposed to be on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Dina. Uh, <laughs> and Dina is another great example because she she uh, has just kind of started on this one year journey for Dina, right? Um, but that's such a like. There's a reason that you have had this fire in you. There's a reason it's there. So when it things the shit hits the fan, <laughs> just just ride it out. Just go to bed. You need that rest. Like staying up all night is not gonna help anyone. Yeah. Um, but it does, it somehow works itself out. And Morgan has said that so many times. He's like, huh, it worked out after all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really did. I'm like, son of a gun. So I've really, <laughs> yeah, as a life skill, I really try to remind myself of that across the board for everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, because, you know, I'm still here, I'm standing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are, what are, some of the things that are your favorite part about what you've created with Rad Boulder? Uh, the people, you know, I, I often say this, it's such a, it was really kind of creative as a selfish thing. <laughs> like if, you know, if we have to have a job and I really want to cook, um, 
I was like, well, how can I, I just want to hang out with endurance athletes all day. They're my heroes, Sarah. Like those are the people I want to spend my time with. <laughs> people like you, like if I can see people like you all day and make somehow make money out of it and pay the mortgage, that's gold. Um, so to me, that's what it is. Like now I just get to hang out with cool people and feed them. And you know, if you feed people, they want to stick around. So <laughs> <laughs> they show up if you have like cookies and whatnot with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So to me, it's, that's what it is. Um, and I really prefer people that play in the dirt. Yeah. Trail runners, mountain bikers, snowshoers, climbers, like they're just real, like that kind of organic person. Um, that's what I love. Even when I like, I'm really introverted. So even when I'm like, oh, I don't want to go on the road, the minute I get somewhere, and I see all those people and they come up, you, you see they're, they're your family on the road. That's my reminder of, okay, it's going to be all right. Like it's those friends and relationships that I've built. Um, that's what it is. Like I feel my craft, I feel like I've gotten stronger at my craft. Like I'm a better cook because of it, because I have all these challenges of like, how do I, I need, I'm, I've grown as a cook, absolutely. But that's probably the smallest part of it. The biggest part is all the people and the, the friendships that, that we've made along the way. Like you. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I, like, I think my favorite thing about being a runner is the connections. Like the mm -hmm. people, the way that, that that's just been a, a modality to meet people and connect mm -hmm. with people who I never would have met otherwise, you know, and it's like your world expands and it's better for it. To get all these really neat connections. So yeah, um, absolutely. That's so, that's so true. You know, I just yesterday I was talking to Tim and Krista Olson on the phone and I hung up the phone and it's never lost on me who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we're all the same, just good people. But like, they're just, Tim is just such a good guy. And they've become just really dear friends. And I'll always remember that first message I sent to Tim and um, how deeply that friendship has grown, uh, but also who he is, like what he's accomplished as an athlete and just as a human, the growth that he's had. Um, he has just taught me a lot as a, as a human and a person, as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, I really enjoyed my time. Um, they're just such a great couple and great family. So mm -hmm. yeah. Fun. So how, I mean, when your job is to nourish and feed and sort of sustain other people, what do you do to take care of yourself to <laughs> self and sustain yourself? Like how, how do you make yourself a priority and not get burned out and tired and all that? I knew this question was going to come. Uh, <laughs> that's the worst part, right? Um, that's why I hire a running coach. Um, and that's why I hired a, a very specific running coach because I knew there was like probably one of two people that I would actually respect enough to listen to. Um, and I still don't, I'm not doing a good job with that right now. Sorry, Coop. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually eat pretty well. I, I really do. Um, I would say, and the whole, like, what you put in your body thing, like, that's really individual. I'm not here to preach to what anyone should eat. But for me, I know what I need to take, uh, eat, need to eat to take care of myself. Um, I always have little packages of food with me and like random bags of carrots and hummus and uh, consume copious amounts of water. Somewhere in this room, I have a giant canning jar of water. I always have a lacrosse ball under a leg that I'm rolling around. <laughs> nice. Nice. One in every bag, one in every car. Um, yeah. So I, I might not get my run in every day. Mm. Uh, I know I don't right now is race season is really hard. And what I mean by race season is everyone else's race season. <laughs> it's also my race season. But uh, I have a really, Oops. really difficult time personally staying true to my own schedule. So I have to put it on a calendar uh, and then I still fail at meeting those meetings for myself. 
Um, so if I don't get a run in, then I still will stretch and roll um, and rest. For me, a rest day is a really, really important thing for me. Um, and just like more often than not, like it, one of the reasons that we moved up high was because it really detaches us from the mayhem and chaos of things. Um, Boulder's not like this big city, but I'm almost always on. So if I can be off and not leave the house um, and just be in the quiet, that is really a good way for me to recharge. Um, yeah. yeah. And there's just, we're surrounded by just national forests. So it's really, it's easier for me to just like go up, get lost in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. So um, paying attention to what is going in my body. Um, I don't really drink very much. I try to have like, sometimes if I'm being social, I'll try to have a second drink and I can get like halfway through a second drink. <laughs> I'm a bad drinker. The older so. I get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I, really, I try to take really good care of myself um, because if I don't, it catches up with me bad and then I'm laid up like, and that's, that's not good. My job is really physical. Um, the week before last week, we had like a four day event with Adidas and I had, it was like two 18 hour days and two 15 hour days. And my steps during those days, my watch was like yelling at me at the end of the day were like 27 to 37,000 steps a day. And I wasn't running. That was, uh, I mean, I think especially in the sort of industry and in the role that you're in where your job is to take care of other people it's so important to step back and make sure that you're taking care of yourself because yeah. otherwise there's no, there's no well to draw from. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So moving forward, what are your sort of hopes and dreams and goals for rad in the next, you know, next few years? Um, you know, a lot of people ask, like, well, what kind of growth do you want to have? Like, you must want to get bigger. Are you going to open rad in other places? Um, the answer is no. I don't have, do not aspire to open a rad in any other city or state. Um, and the biggest reason is because I can't be there. I don't want to move to California. Um, if we can't be there, it takes a really special person to be able to do the food side and to be able to connect with the endurance athletes the way that we do. Um, and I'm selfish. I want to be, <laughs> I want to be that person. Um, yeah. If I could find that person, then I would hire that person. Um, but it's a really, it's a unique, um, gosh, it's a unique person to find. So um, if I could, you know, I always keep an eye out. Um, and I don't hire friends because I'm a really demanding person to work for. And I would like to be friends after. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think the big things are, as I watch the company grow, what the pattern that I see the most is uh, we don't do individual meals anymore. Um, we're just events and the events are longer in nature and more concentrated and with bigger connection. Mm. So they're becoming like four and five days at a time, like two a month. And then I can take the rest of the month off. Yeah. And that also gives us a bigger connection with um, that client and the people that we're with because I'm able to stay with them and understand them and, um, just really spend time with them and yeah it's just it feels right I yeah feel like that's what's growing for us yeah that's that's amazing I think sometimes it's a little hard to welcome those shifts and changes into like your business or mm -hmm. or kind of that, that's like that things are kind of moving shaking but that sounds like such a great fit for you in terms of just like the ebb and flow of like heart concentrated work and then sort of a season of rest and then more rather than just like a constant. Cause I know that when, when I think when I met you, you were doing sort of the individual meal delivery to athletes around Boulder mm -hmm. and it, like it was like a constant thing all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't. And honestly, business wise, um, 
it's smarter. There's more money in larger events. And if, you know, if that's part of the conversation, that's where the bills are paid anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just smarter all around for my health. It's smarter all around for the business. Um, and it's smarter from a monetary standpoint. Yeah. 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 It's always interesting to see kind of, we start on a journey with in one place and then sometimes it just, it takes us somewhere that can be really, really neat. So it's neat mm -hmm. to see this has really evolved and changed over the years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if people want to find you, follow you on social media, um, connect with you, where can they, where can they find you? Uh, Rad Boulder on all social channels. They can email me at uh, kelly at radboulder.com. Kelly with a Y. Yeah. Kelly with a Y. All right. Uh, kelly, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you showing up and sharing your story. Well, thank you, Sarah. It's always great to follow you. And I really appreciate your time. I miss um, you. Yeah, I hope that our paths cross. I mean, I know that they will at some point, somewhere, our paths yeah. will cross again. So, all right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and um, have a great week. Thanks, you too. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, bye. I really enjoyed having Kelly on. Um, like I said, she just has just a sweet soul for nourishing and um, helping people um, and just a really great story. Um, and really a story of somebody who kind of had an idea and found a niche and just started to serve in that area, which I think can lead to some really neat things when you sort of tap into to your natural talents and abilities and giftings and really just like follow what we were talking about, follow that, um, that idea that's in your heart that's been planted there um, and persevere through some of the difficulty. So really fun to, to talk to Kelly. So next week, I am taking the week off because it is Rise Run Retreat week, which means I am putting on my four-day women's running retreat in Vermont. And next week, I am clearing my calendar so I can just be totally focused on that So um, and showing up for the women who are going to be coming to the retreat. So I won't be doing any Instagram Live episode next week. But I'm sure I will be on Instagram Live, Instagram stories throughout the week as I prepare for the retreat. So you can certainly follow along there. The following week on May 22nd, I will have Lauren Atwood on. So Lauren is from Otter Creek Homes. She and her husband, Chris, have started a renovation and remodel company here in the seacoast of New Hampshire. And the two of them are in business together. Chris is the... Carpenter and Lauren is the designer and I'm going to have her on to talk about um, what they've created and what it's like to be in business with your spouse. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, just want to say a quick thank you to Trigger Pin for sponsoring today's episode. So Trigger Pin is the foam roller rolling massage tool that I use um, and you can grab, I'm trying to pick it up with my foot here. <laughs> this is a Trigger Pin. It is pretty much the only roller that I use. It's a fantastic tool. And they um, are graciously sponsoring this episode and Rise Run Retreat. Um, and if you want to check them out, you can go to tpinmuscletherapy.com. And if you want to snag one for yourself, you can use code RUNFAR to get 10% off. So thanks to them for sponsoring us, me, this. <laughs> thanks so much for joining me, guys. I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday and see you again on the 22nd.